Okay, brilliant. Yeah, before we start, i um, just like to um, introduce um, two of our new members of staff. Before we um, do that, Nick, can you yeah. say the GDPR statement? <clears throat> okay. Our GDPR statement is, if you don't want to be recorded, would you like to please leave now? Done that. And that doesn't mean you two new staff can disappear. You haven't got a choice. Yeah, um, as you know, we've grown quite a lot this year and we've taken on now another two members of staff. If Jess, 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 Josh, you'd like to introduce yourself and say hi to everybody. I am Josh, I'm the newest uh, member to LMPG as a membership coordinator. Get down. Yes, so if you get Josh and he doesn't know the answer, give him some wiggle room to come and ask us who have been in the job a long time. And Menely, would you like to say hi to everybody? Hello, I'm also a mem the newest membership coordinator. <laughs> yes, brilliant. Welcome aboard. And don't forget the journey is going to be quite long with all the stuff they have to learn. So just like to say welcome aboard and part of the team. Okay, right, I'm getting on with now what we're here to talk about. Um, people might think what we're going to be talking about oh, is just a cylinder. And I thought, no, it's a bit more to just cylinders. And to be quite honest, I actually did think cylinder was a cylinder until I met this guy, Neil Thompson. You lot think I can talk. You might have to take a coffee break because we had a meeting with him. We're supposed to be like half an hour talking about cylinders and me and Anthony just sat there and went. So, and it was really quite fascinating to make sure you've got the right cylinder to do the right job, the right size, the right boiler. So I thought it'd be a great educational piece because they've got a lot of landlords that are moving into the HMO service accommodation kind of area of the market where a combi would not be suitable, especially with the amount of showers that you have. Okay. So um, again, we've, we've, we've got the two big chiefs into this. We've got Ozo Hot Waters and we've got Neil Thompson. Yes. Who's the national sales director and also hiding in the background. We've got the managing director. So I'm quite honored to have you two senior people talking to our members and from an NMPG point of view, that's quite good from that we're now waking up some of the people that haven't got involved with NMPG because of our side. When we're running around 4,600 members, we don't have to make a noise now. And it's really good that we've got companies like you now contacting us and saying, can we get involved? So Neil, if you'd like to introduce yourself and I'm just going to pass it over to you. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Nick, for that. So yeah, my name is Neil Thompson. I'm the UK sales director uh, for Ozo Hot Water. Um, I've been with Ozo now for the last 18, 18 months or so. I'm, I'm going to try and not talk too much as, as, as Nick, has, um, Nick has alluded. I can, um, oh, I can, can, talk, can shut up. talk very enthusiastically about, about, about cylinders and especially Ozo. So, so I'll, 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 I'll save that for the presentation. I mean, do you want me to move on to the presentation? Is that, no, is that... introduce yourself. Tell them about you and where you've come from. Yeah, yes, certainly. So, I mean, previously in my career, I was with Heat Ray Sadia for, for quite some time, really, developing the, the, the Megaflow brand with Heat Ray uh, and, and a lot of their other products. So, I've got about, uh, I hate to say, you won't see it from, from obviously my dashingly good young looks, but I, I've got about 20, 25 years' experience in, 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 the, in the water heating sector um, with, with market leaders, really, Zip as well, previously, who, who, who have a more commercial uh, background, but domestically. Uh, I've worked with with two of the most lead, two of the biggest leading brands in the UK, which is which is Heat Ray Sadia's Megaflow, and obviously now with Ozo. Um, and I came to Ozo about eighteen months ago, and and and, and Ozo are, we're very innovative. We're, it's a very very proactive and 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 a company that wants to really move forward in terms of driving new technologies and and uh, efficiencies and energy efficiencies in the market. So I was very impressed with Ozo when I when I when I came across to the business and. You know everything we've everything that we've we we promise and everything we deliver within our within our products is is very genuine and, and and very well thought through in terms of you know making the user experience and the installation experience as easy and simple and as innovative as we possibly can. So it's a great company and a great a great great time we, we're having and you know we 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 believe we believe you know in our products and our and our products ability and uh, and efficiency. Good. 
Right, I've got nothing to say on that one. But coming back to the, the amount of years experience, you can see the market changing, especially with about saving energy. It, it, it is. I mean, the market, the market, you know, whether, when you look at the market across the UK, gas boilers, electric, uh, electric cylinders, um, various different other renewable heat sources, air source heat pumps, ground source heat pumps, you know, the market changes daily, not, not yearly almost, you know, every, every, everybody, everybody's switching to different, different things. But the one thing that stays consistent within the market and has done for, for, for the last 30, 40 years is invented stainless steel, you know, hot water storage on the basis that, it, that it's tried and tested and, 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 and does what it says on the tin. What you can do with, with, with what we do is, is, is look at how we can make the, the, the sort of store of hot water more central to whether it be the energy efficiency of a home or whether it be, whether it be driving other technologies and supporting other technologies. But what is critical and essential in delivering performance is stored hot water. So you can improve, you know, boilers improve, um, you know, other technologies improve, some pass by, some are successful, some, some fall by the wayside. What, what has been consistent within that time, Nick, I'll be honest with you, is, is, is a stainless steel cylinder that is, that is designed to store and deliver, you know, good hot water performance. And, and uh, call me a traditionalist on that, I don't know, but there is no better way of delivering domestic hot water. I'll let you carry on with your presentation. I'm not going to shut you up. <laughs> So I'll, I'll share my screen if that's all right, because obviously, obviously, uh, what I will just say to everybody is obviously, in, in terms of a mixed audience, what I'll try and do with this is 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 go through some of the, identify some of the the technologies and and, and products and, and equipment that's used in domestic hot water, but move more on to why why cylinders, as I've just uh, alluded to, are, are 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 important in terms of good domestic hot water delivery, but but more towards you know how landlords and uh, HMO properties and private private rental properties can benefit from the use of using using stored hot water and cylinders. So I'll 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 touch on I'll I'll, I'll share my screen now to um, to bring up the presentation. Um, hopefully everybody can see that. Okay, I'll just bring my screen. There we go. So available to to for, for domestic use in the uk there, there, there is multiple multiple options um in relation to um you know providing domestic hot water and i'm not going to touch on every one because we would generally be here for, for for a week but but i've picked out what 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 is essentially the the the, the more common ones and and and, and I'll explain very briefly what they what these are. So apologies to anybody who's who's got a bit of the sort of plumbing heating knowledge in the background. But an indirect cylinder, effectively, is is a cylinder that that links into a, a central heating system. So it works with a system boiler, and a system boiler basically uh, controls your your central heating and your and your hot water storage. So they're systems that are more commonly used generally in 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 domestic houses uh, and larger properties uh in in, ter in terms of being the most effective and 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 where gas is where gas is the primary heat source a gas a gas boiler direct cylinders are 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 are, are basically the the primary source of heating hot water so there's no other there's no other heat source so the direct cylinder uh heats all of the hot water itself it's connected directly to the hot water system and and that's the that's the primary heat source so there would be no gas so in off-gas areas and non-gas non non-gas properties, direct cylinders are are, are 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 the best choice. We then move on to things like renewables, and that's quite a broad subject and a, and a completely separate presentation in itself. But you know, again, within within stored hot water, there are many many variants for renewables. There's the ground source air source heat, air source heat pumps. There's buffer vessels. There's there's uh, solar thermal, solar PV. They all have very different different methods and and. We see more movement in the renewable market towards things like air source uh, heat pump than we are some of the solar collectors and, 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 and other variants in, in the market. But they can be quite expensive systems to install. And these are all, these are all unvented systems. So these, these are not the traditional, what we would call a wet system, where you would have a cold water tank in a, in a, in a loft or, or, or above and, and a gravity fed system to then a copper, a copper tank. Um, that would work then with a with a with a with a gas boiler uh, in a in a in a in a in a sort of system uh, setup. Those so is systems that called heat only unvented system. 
Yeah, they, they, well, they, there are various. This heat's only the system, this system, and 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 then there's and then there's a, a combi boiler as such, Nick. But the the old systems, they're not they're not that dissimilar in terms of the way that they would operate, but they're not as effective, they're not as efficient, certainly in terms of heat loss and and delivery and performance than a than a modern unvented system. The other advantage of an unvented system is what you would call a closed system. So so what they do is they create pressure or hold pressure within it so what you get from unvented systems is not only uh, they're cleaner they're, they're they're more efficient but they deliver more performance because you, you maintain the water pressure or in some cases increase the water pressure within the domestic system um, and that's more so what they're designed to do so with a cylinder in an unvented environment you're getting high performance or better performance from you know things like showers and baths and filling baths and and, and that type of thing whereas within a vented system you lose an awful lot of that pressure within the system uh, and, and they're what they call open vented. Um, and, then these, and then these boilers, so system boilers, as I mentioned, alluded to work, work in, con, in conjunction with, with cylinders um, and, and they will run, they will, they will heat the radiators, they will heat the hot water. Uh, and then a combi boiler. Now, now I'll touch on combi boilers versus cylinders because that's, that, that's generally the big fight and I'll, and I'll touch on that later in the, in, as the presentation develops. But Combi, combi boilers, you know, they, they're generally easy to install. They're relatively cheap to install. But the big drawback is, is, is you're sacrificing performance where you're using combi boilers generally. But they, they have their place, and, and, and it'd be unfair of me to, to say that they, they, they're not sufficient in certain circumstances. But what, what, what you don't get from them is effective delivery. And a lot of the performance measures in terms of cost to run um, are based on single, single outlets or single... Sing, single sort of products to run like a shower or, or, or fill in a bath and the rest of it but actually when you start to combine the demand on a combi boiler it becomes a very different problem for 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 dealing domestic hot water so so i'll touch on that and then and then finally there's electric boilers which the the electric boilers again have their place but they're very they're very slow um, they don't deliver uh central heating they're generally they're generally not not combination systems or system they're based on a heat only basis so all they will do they generally run under floor heating systems or heat hot water for, for domestic use. Um, what they won't generally do, you know, you'd know, you have to combine them with things like uh, panel radiators and, and that, sort, that sort of thing. But also fairly high kilowatt rating. So again, they're, they're very energy efficient at the point of use because they stand dormant until you actually need them. But they work like basically very long uh, heat, heat uh, showers, almost like, like long showers with a, with, a, with a sort of heat converter. So, so water passes through a, 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 copper, a copper thermal transfer tube and it, and it heats up basically and, and delivers hot water. So they, they work very hard when they are working, but, but, but they don't do anything when, they, when they're not working. So they, they're great for things like potentially holiday homes where you may have long periods of inactivity, but that's probably, that's probably you know, they, have a, they have a use, but they're not, they're not the most energy efficient uh, options. So obviously I'm, I'm going to move more towards, towards cylinders because that's what I do, that's what I'm paid for, that's what my gaffer's on the other end, other, 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 other side of the, uh, the laptop listening to, somewhere, in, somewhere up in Durham. Um, so, you know, why, why, why use a, a cylinder specifically? You know, I've spoken there about all the options, but with cylinders, cylinders deliver better flow rates. The water is stored within the cylinder, so the capacity of the cylinder is usable, the hot water that stores within it. Whereas with such as a combi boiler, what they actually do is they heat the water as it flows through the boiler. So what you tend to see is where there's high demand for water, it slows down, it slows the flow rate down in order to achieve the temperature rises that you require. And the hotter the water you want, the more demand you want, the harder it has to work and the slower the flow rate. So you can end up with, you know, great showers that deliver, say, 15 litres per minute performance or 20 litres per minute performance but you won't necessarily get that from a combi boiler. The shower might be capable of that, but the heat source might not. So it's almost, it's almost the equivalent of buying a Bentley and sticking an 1100 engine in it and expecting it to drive like a Bentley. That, it just doesn't work that way. So cylinders give you that guaranteed flow rate. They deliver performance. So if you want good showers, good, good hot bath filling, um, if you've got multiple outlets that need to be serviced, then, then cylinders can, can, can deliver that. And that's what we would call simultaneous usage. So in, in, in environments where you may have uh, certainly things where student accommodation is a good example of this, where you may have two or three different showers being used in the same, in the, in the same uh, property or accommodation that may be used at the same time. Combi boilers struggle very, very much with that demand and, and you can get fluctuating temperatures, you can get high and low temperatures. Um, and, and again, that's not the shower, that's the heat source that's causing that because it can't cope with the, with the amount of usage. 
again, sizing the proper sizing of a cylinder will deliver sufficient hot water at, at, at good flow rates and good pressures to, to all outlets, a, a multiple outlet uh, device. Um, equally, if, if, if a boiler fails and you're on a combi boiler, you've no hot water, you've no heating, that's it, the boiler's gone. Great thing with cylinders and, and, and certainly in a system, uh, system setup is that they are equipped with immersion heaters. So most indirect cylinders will be rated at three kilowatt, most directs, are, uh, which would deliver hot water directly anyway, a six kilowatt. But a three kilowatt immersion heater will be sufficient to, to, to cover you and heat up the cylinder when in times of sort of breakdown or emergency and, uh, and so on and so forth. So if your gas has gone, you've got an electric backup with a, with a cylinder in order to still provide uh, domestic hot water. Um, Dead legs, um, um, not not somebody kicking you on the shins. This this is this is this is all punching you on the thighs. This is this is something that, that is common within combi boilers. In in that they the source of the heat is the boiler. So you can imagine them from that. There are lots of pipes that draw off the boiler around the property. So there's a, when it's not when it's not being used or it's been inactive. There's a slug of water that sits in that pipe work that's got to be delivered through an outlet before the the heat follows through from the boiler. But you don't get that with cylinders because of where they're positioned and, and, and because we can have what we call a secondary return on a cylinder, which allows you to create an almost instantaneous heat circuit where the cylinder is constantly cycling the, the water through. So it's creating hot water available to all outlets at all times. Because combi boilers are static in the sense that the way they work and other boilers, then all you can do is you've got to wait for that slug of water to come through. So in, in, in properties that are water metered, you, you're using a significant amount of water before you get into hot water. You know, you're seeing, that, you're seeing that, that cold water draw off. Everybody does it, stick your hand on the tap, wait for it to warm up, wait for it to warm up. That's very, that's very common with combi boilers. With cylinders, you get a much quicker, quicker delivery of, of hot water, so less dead legs. And that can, that can also be effective for Legionella as well. Um, there's, there's, there's limited risk of Legionella in, in, in most properties, but I would expect in most private landlord properties, it is something that does concern people. Um, and, and Legionella is only ever going to be going to, going to be a concern when it becomes aerated, which is obviously from things like showers and certain types of taps. With less cold water and dead leg, you, you lower the risk of Legionella as well, which is very low risk, I have to say, but it, but it does it does lessen the risk. Um, and, and, and certainly some of some of our products, we have we have anti Legionella sort of purging within our products. So so you can set cylinders and, and including ours. Can, can run sort of regular purging to heat up, cool down systems to kill off any Legionella within systems as well, if, if, if necessary. Um, the other thing with combis is that, that they, they can shut down. So with, with combis, if you're running in the central heating and you're running and then you turn a tap on, they, they alternate between the two. So you can actually lose your central heating for a period of time, you're trying to fill a bath and then, and then vice versa, turn your heating on and you're not getting hot water because again, they can't cope with the, with the demand unless you have a very high kilowatt rating, which is very expensive to do or, or ultimately not, not suitable or not available in certain size properties. With cylinders, you don't have that heating shut down because it's, it's constant, it delivers. And, 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 and again, within colder months, obviously you'd imagine as the ambient temperature drops into combis, they need, to, they need more time to heat the water to the temperature rise you want because it's coming from a lower, a lower starting point. Again, with cylinders, that's not the case because it's stored, it's held within the cylinder. They have minimal heat loss and, 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 and throughout colder months, you're not seeing an increase in your, in your energy cost to heat the water because, because the cylinder is storing that hot water on your behalf and, and creating a consistent flow rate. So through seasonal averaging change or seasonal cost changes, they are less, they're, they're less visible within, within, within the use of cylinders. Um, I touched on this earlier, so I'll, I'll skip through fairly quickly, but pressure and performance, you guaranteed that with an unvented system. Um, average sort of domestic pressure is, is, is it, it changes in multi-occupancy, of course, but on average about two bar pressure. We, we, ours are, our, our pressure limiters are set, set at, at three bar, so, so, but we test our cylinders up to 10 bar. Uh, in terms of pressure, you know, in dairy, they could work and operate quite comfortably in high pressure, but they work very well in low pressure as well and can create a certain amount of pressure increase within the system in low pressure systems. Um, you can introduce renewables into, into the cylinder world as well, so you can future proof systems. Uh, with gas boilers, that's not possible. You would have to literally rip out and replace. Um, with cylinders, you can introduce the renewable sources, solar thermal, solar PV, things like that into, in, in, into your system. Um, and the other thing is sizing and suitability. 
we touch, I've touched on this with kilowatt ratings for combi boilers, equally for, for capacities, and, I, and I'll come on to that as a, separate, as, a, as a separate subject. And finally is warranty. You know, cylinder, cylinder manufacturers on our generally tend to stick to a fairly common 25-year warranty, uh, mainly around the inner vessel and the construction of the cylinder. Components that come around the cylinder generally are sort of in two to five years warranties, but boiler companies have a big battle over it, what they call in-the-box warranties. Um, and they go from seven years to ten years to you know five years, and and it all just depends on what particular boiler and how well it's how well how well it's it's performing in terms of its reliability generally that that drives that out of the box warranties. But traditionally, you would expect within a five year life cycle of a boiler, you would have had to have some work done to that boiler. And, and obviously, as 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 is the same with cylinders, they do require, or, or certainly we would recommend annual servicing in order to um, ensure that they're working safely and and, and effectively. But, but the cost of that annual service or the, the, the likelihood of having to replace a part within a cylinder versus a boiler are very different. Um, and, and the reason why cylinders have much longer warranties is because they don't, they don't, we don't expect to have to do anything with them in that 25 years. So they, 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 they're much more reliable in terms of their life cycle and give more, more return, more bang for your buck effectively in that if you invest in, in, in a cylinder, over time, it's giving, you, it's giving you a much stronger sort of payback period in its life cycle generally. I touched on, on, on sizing and suitability, um, and this is where this is, this is very much cylinder, this is the fight, this is the boxing match between a cylinder and a, and a, and a combi boiler here. So, so thankfully, we're not, we're, not, we're not presenting today with anybody from sort of Worcester or Baxi because we'd be having a good old scrap over this. But, but, but this, this, is, this is fact, this is performance figures that, that, that you know, we're quite happy to share. But a standard combi, as you can see there, they have different ratings, and like anything else, the lower the kilowatt rating, the, 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 harder, the harder that's going to work to perform, so the less, the less performance you're going to see from that. But on average, to, to achieve an, an uplift from an ambient temperature to, to increase it by, by 35 degrees, the flow rate that you're going to be able to achieve is about 10 litres per minute. Now, that's not per outlet, that's per property. So that's, that's pretty slow. Now, most showers on average, a standard blending shower, will tend to uh, advertise a performance around 15 litres a minute. And that's what you'd need, 12 to 15 litres in order to, to have a decent sort of, sort of, sort of shower. Um, so anything less than that, you can see straight away. And that, that say, I, I emphasise that's not per outlet, that is actually um, a per household. So as soon as you open a couple of outlets, you obviously start to, you start to reduce that literage per minute as well. And that's what, what, that's what this next, next sort of example shows. So in a, in a, in a typical outlet demand, you're looking at six to 10 to 14 liters to 18 liters for a bath to 22 liters for a power shower. So if you can't deliver that performance, it's pointless what you've got attached to the hot water system. You could have the, the most expensive, you know, um, all, all body jet shower and, 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 and sort of sauna experience installed in, in a bathroom. But if, if the engine can't drive the performance, then it can't deliver the, the performance that, 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 that's, that, that, it, that it's sort of suggesting it can. You need that. You need the engine room behind it, and, and combi boilers do fail when it comes to that sort of performance. So, in, in terms of what a combi can actually run, and and and, and this is really relevant sort of to, 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 to property owners and, and and people interested in in in, in different sizing of, of, of capability. You can see at the lower end of the twenty four kilowatts. You know. It, if you're running a bath or a shower at that 10 litre per minute, you can't run anything else. Anything else that you then open as an outlet, whether it be a sink tap or a basin, is going to affect that. that and you get, this, you get this, this sort of fluctuating hot and cold coming out of the taps. This is when people start to scream and they're in the shower in the morning when you turn the, turn the cold water tap on the kitchen to fill the kettle. Suddenly they get, they get steamingly hot water or, or freezing cold water, depending which is getting the priority. So combis can, can, can create that. And what I would say is an emphasis to that is in properties that may have elderly, um, elderly tenants or, or, or a design specifically for you know, that sort of over 55 uh, retirement market, it is something to bear in mind because scolding is a real issue, whether it be in the young or in the old, you know, that sort of gap between the two is okay. You know, we, we, we tend to react quicker the, 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 uh, with our skin. The younger, you, the younger you are, but obviously children and up to, and then into the elderly bracket, uh, have a slower reaction rate to those or, 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 or more severe reaction to those temperatures. So again, cylinders can provide a much more safer environment in terms of, in, in, in terms of building our water. And you can see even up to 42 kilowatt, you know, suddenly it's, sorry, go on, Nick. Yep. Yeah. See, the, I've always had combis and I'm only talking from my personal point of view. Yeah. Is that 
if you go with the combi, you criticise the combi and people criticise system boilers, people criticise combi. But in a shower environment, one, you've got the thermostat shower, so scolding, yes, is should not happen. And the other thing is, I mean, on my shower, I love a combi shower because the force of it coming out is a lot better than an electric shower. And the other big thing, houses are not designed in the last 10 years, your three bedroom, your two bedroom, your flats, they're not geared up for system boilers because where do you put the tank? I'll come on to it. Uh, it's a good question. I mean, what I would say, combi, what you call a combi shower and an electric shower, it's a thermostatic blending valve and, it, and an electric shower. They're the two you get. What, what, what can, that, that most now, if not, not all are, are what are what they call TMV3 compliant, which is which is safe water working regs. So you're quite right. They'll have a they'll have a stop at, at sort of 28 degrees effectively where you can control that. But actually, once you break that stop and you move into the next bracket, you can see fluctuation in temperature. They're not all that effective because you've yeah. sort of said to the valve by by overriding that TMV3, actually, I want this a bit hotter. Yes. And 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 a, and a good combi, a good strong combi will do that. But if you've got two or three showers and you're all you're all in different showers at the same time. That, that nah, nice that nah, performance. That's where you come into like the HMO market, which then yep. you might think in the HMO market, as soon as you go to two or three, I've always suggested that you might want to be thinking about going into the system boiler place. Yeah, but, absolutely. Uh, that, and like a small two bedded house. Yeah, the perfect world, yes, was that they made houses smaller in the 80s because I was building the damn things and there was no room to put any of them in yeah and we and what 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 we do and i'll come on to the very specifics of our product we we're very successful with it with it with our with our direct products into 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 that sort of multi-occupancy or into the smaller property market because we can do combinations of sort of washing machine frames and, and we've got a very compact system and i'll explain how that, how that works but you're right there are circumstances and there's always going to be circumstances where combis is going to be your only option because of space you know absolutely if there isn't the cylinder does need a space. It, it can be located in a multiple multiple sort of you know, choice of places. And the other thing I would add as well in terms of combi and HMOs as well, which we, we've not sort of touched on this because I'm not expert in sort of carbon carbon knocks and things like that. But but the other thing is what a cylinder doesn't produce is carbon monoxide. So you, so again, what you what you've got in 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 sort of student or elderly or multi occupancy or, or from a private landlord point of view. You, you're not sticking carbon monoxide alarms all over the place around a cylinder because there's no necessity to do that. So, so what you what you get with a cylinder is a consistent performance. So if you've got a power shower and you stick a cylinder driving that, you, you know you can you can for as long as there's water in that cylinder and that cylinder's got hot water, you can stand under that all day and get the same performance. There is always a, there is always a point with a combi that, that that you will get that drop. You'll suddenly get that slug. Certainly in in in, in environments where two showers or a bath turned on at the same time. So it is it is it, the higher higher rated combis are obviously going to perform better. As you can see in this, the 42 kilowatt will 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 deliver a bath, a shower, and and a basin. But you'll start to see a reduction in the flow rate. You'll start to see a reduction in the performance as, as that goes. Comparative to cylinders, the cost of the 42 boiler <laughs> is really quite expensive. They start to move up in price. You're doubling in price. Yeah, you're going from you're going from five six hundred to a thousand to twelve hundred pounds in, in in terms in terms of out of the box product and and an installation and, and and everything else is is affected by by that as well, um, because the wiring the, the you know everything else goes up and up and up and up in terms in terms of cost yeah. in terms of cabling and and and, and wiring into the fuse box. Um, the comparative with cylinders and, and, and 22 mil domestic is a, is a sort of standard standard flow and flow uh, flow in flow out for for domestic cylinders what you can actually see is that, that at a temperature of 60 degrees a temperature stored at 60 degrees within the cylinder it can deliver 45 liters per minute so you, you're way above the 42 kilowatt performance straight away and, and at a lower temperature what they call what they call the v40 delivery figure which is where we're sort of in our industry sort of benchmarked against in terms of performance it can deliver up to 65 liters per minute so that's a that's a significant difference in terms of flow rate. So you know they they whenever you you're looking at, at multiple outlets, filling a bath, running a shower at the same time, potentially two tenants using using a bathroom and an ensuite at the same time, cylinders cannot be beaten on performance. It just you just can't beat that that that, that level of, of of liter per minute LPM in, in terms of cylinders. And that's the and size and suitability in cylinders is down to capacity. You know, if you if you've got if you've got five people living in the same same apartment or house, and you put a hundred liter cylinder in there, you're quickly going to run out of hot water. 
and that's where combis that's where combis can be can be a benefit because with a combi it's sort of instantaneous hot water you don't have to worry about how much water you're storing but you'd have to worry about what 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 energy you you, you need to use to draw on to deliver hot water to, to to a number of outlets and that can that can increase not only the cost of the installation of the product and the product required the, the service and the demand you know to the maintenance of that thing because it's going to be working much much harder than a cylinder would but 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 also in terms of um, you know, uh, energy usage and, and, and what it's going to draw in terms of electric and gas in terms of being able to operate anywhere near these sort of, the, well, it can't get near these litres per minute. So the cost to deliver hot water is variable in terms of demand, but the, reali the, the reality is, is that you can't beat a performance of a cylinder. You can't beat it. Neil, could I jump in at the minute and ask a few questions that I've had building up? Of course, of course. I may be stepping on some toes of what's coming in later in the presentation. So if I am, just let me know and we'll cover that when we cover it. But the first thing I wanted to ask, was you mentioned uh, pressure uh, in, the, in the last few slides. Um, one of the questions that's come in here is how does that fit with the pressure from, from the street pipe? It, well, it, it depends. I mean, in, incoming. If you've got from the from the from the from the street main, um, it, it can be variable. But but if, what what tends to happen in a let's say domestic housing estate is probably the best way to 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 to, to understand this. Is if if you're the first house that's near where the where the mains the mains is coming in, the pressure is generally higher because you're coming straight off the mains. As you go to the back of the estate, if it's coming off the same main system, pressure is lost as it as it as it goes through. So, so two bar average pressure, and by two bar average pressure, we're talking about 29 and a half million homes in the UK to, 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 to sort, of, sort of ascertain that pressure. It can vary. I mean, you can have up to six bar pressure. You know, in the evening, you can see higher pressures as well. So within, within cylinders, within the safety equipment that we provide, um, most, well, not most, all have to come with a, with a pressure reducing valve so that what you get is a consistent flow. Because the last thing you want to do is turn a hot water tap on and get a massive slug of pressure coming out of hot water tap. With an unvented system and a, and, a, and, a, and a cylinder system, we provide a PRV, which which means that regardless of what the incoming mains pressure is, if it's above three three three, uh, effectively three three bar, it'll be reduced by the PRV down to three bar through the domestic system. And you can get different levels, you get different ratings. You get six 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 bar PRVs, eight bar PRVs, uh, and things like that. But as standard, we provide a three bar PRV. Okay. Um, one of the big sort of questions that have, that has come in. Um, around this system is combi uh, boxing match, as you called it. I think it's, it's probably a little, a little more uh, subtle than that, and it's horses for courses, really. But um, is is the size of the cylinder? So is there space to fit this in to get all these benefits? Uh, and one of the members in in the chat here, and I'm, I'm not going to read out the whole thing because Paul's already had a bit of a japery with them. But they said they've been running a, a 30 kilowatt combi in a five bed house uh, because there's just not room to put that system tank in. So how big is a system tank? Could you, for instance, put the boiler in a kitchen larder unit? No, no. And, and I mean, uh, that, and, and they're, they're, as you, you, you rightly say, it, it is horses for courses. You know, look, we, you, in, in a five bedroom house, I would argue, you know, is, is, is there... Is there space you could create a space? I mean, a cylinder, a cylinder cupboard. You know, cylinders on average are about sort of 500 to 600 millimeters in diameter, if you if you imagine. Um, I'll talk about the benefits of ours in terms of space later because we're we're very unique in being able to deliver that and, and help that. There are other there are other solutions. You know, cylind cylinders going going other places, garages and, and various other places where where providing providing the sort of the sort of external temperatures are not are not are not too low. Uh, they can go up in in loft spaces and 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 places like that. Um, so so there is there is multiple locations you could place a cylinder, but in reality, if you're in the position where there's absolutely no way you can you can you can store a cylinder vessel, then then a combi is your only option. You know, combi or electric heating or, or, or alternatives that, that that don't require storage is your only option. It is your only option. Okay, thank you. Um, and I think final question for now that um, someone's asked me: um, Does the heating option make a difference to the cylinder choice? The wet underfloor heating compared to normal central heating. Um. Not in terms of domestic hot water. There, there, are, there, are number, there, are, there are a number of choices you could make in terms of, in terms of um, what you are. I mean, 
you, 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 your underfloor heating effectively would come from your primary heat source, whether that be an electric boiler or a gas boiler or whatever else it would be. How it's configured in terms of that central heating system can make a difference, but the choice of cylinder wouldn't change. You'd still use such as an indirect cylinder in, in that environment. What you can do is incorporate in with different renewable sources. So for instance, if, if, the, if, the, if the solar is running from a, from a heat pump source or from a biomass boiler or from a, an oil boiler or, or, or even from solar thermal or solar PV, then yes, you can integrate cylinders into those into those systems. Whereas, obviously, with generally with with combis, that wouldn't be a requirement. You wouldn't need to do that. So, so they're more flexible within within that type of system. But it wouldn't, you know, if you were running underfloor systems and you were still looking at you were still looking at delivering, um, if you didn't have a gas boiler and you were using underfloor systems, particularly for the for the heat, then you would use a direct uh, cylinder. So you would just have one cylinder, which would be directly heated from its own heat source, effectively electric. And that would deliver your hot water as a completely separate uh, separate system, effectively. Anthony, okay. uh, Craig's gone, come back. Could you read that question out as you've already mentioned it? Uh, yeah. So this was this was regarding the pressure. So we mentioned uh, pressure from the street pipe. Um, the member asking has said, "I actually meant in relation to the combi boiler, i.e., higher pressure equals higher literage per minute." No, because. It, 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 it wouldn't be the case because the same, the same what a combi boiler has got to do pressure pressure is irrelevant to, to heat rise it, it, it doesn't it, it we're after what the what you have is called upstream and downstream flow rate or flow so an upstream flow is generally what's coming up out the out the rising main so you could have let's have a sake of argument you've got six bar the six bar pressure if that flies through the combi boiler at six bar if, if the combi boiler allowed it to do that two things that happen basically you get cold water because it needs time for it to flow through the boiler system to heat the water. So the faster it goes through, the, 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 it just can't it can't hit the temperature, you know. And, and, and no matter how high high you kilowatt rate that, that that product, so what you've got to do is slow it down in the in the downstream effectively, which is which is which is where we are, where 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 all components sit within that sort of downstream. So boilers work in exactly the same way in that you've got to slow you you've got to slow the water down to achieve the temperature. So if you turn your boiler up to sixty degrees hot water temperature. It's got to slow the water down so it can achieve that temperature rise from the ambient temperature. So it runs, I'm, I'm no boiler expert, so, so gas questions and boiler questions are way out of my, my pay grade. But, but, but in principle, they work in, in that way. So if you've got eight bar coming in off the street, it's still got to be slowed down. So there's still pressure reducing required generally on the main to bring it down to, a, to a, what is a usable pressure within the domestic, what they call a downstream effectively. So there's, a, there's a big difference between upstream and downstream. Yeah, but at Neil, <clears throat> try to get that. But it doesn't. It, if you've opened all your taps, yeah, it still goes through the, the heating system. The combi still goes through, and all that comes out is cold water. So you you fl you slow the tap rate, especially yeah. in um, in your bath. If it depends how many liters per minute come out of that bath as to whether you get hot water or cold water. Yes. It's how good the heat exchange is. If it's an right. old one, you don't use uh, filters, and it's got the sludge in the end of the filter. When it goes through the heat exchanger, it's not heating the water up because it's only going through a third or two thirds of the heat exchanger. So you have to slow the rate down that you're filling the bath. Yeah. Totally got all that. Yeah, and I think everybody would have an understanding. That's why it's so important that we maintain our heating system with the filters on, the chemicals in, so that sludge doesn't get into the combis, but also you still, when you're heating, you're heating, you still need a boiler, it's just called a system boiler. Yeah, yeah correct. Whether it's a combi yeah. or whether it's, you still need a boiler on the wall, a white box on the wall, let's call it a white box on the wall, that one heats your radiators up, yeah. one heats the water up to go into the tank, and what I've learned today from you, Neil, was that that, that temperature, is maintained by that tank. Correct, and, and, and the boiler. So the difference between the combi, and when we're talking pressure and performance, what's happening with the boiler is, I suppose, look at a combi as an instantaneous water heater. That's pretty much what it is. Yes. Whereas what, what a system boiler is doing is it's taking an existing store of hot water or ambient water, if you've used all that hot water. So let's say a, a traditionally a, a 180 or a 210 liter uh, cylinder, and it's heating that water that's static within that cylinder. And then as you're drawing off that cylinder, what's happening is, is the boiler's kicking in and, and, and then heating more water and that's pushing back into the cylinder and the cylinder stores yes. that hot water. So, so what you're getting is on the downstream of that is, is consistent pressure. So if that's coming in at six bar, you know, from, from, from the boiler even potentially, 
then you still we're still reducing it down to sort of three bar PR, three bar PRV and, and pushing it through at that. And so you can change that can that can change accordingly on the downstream. But but what you get with a combi is is it's got to slow it down to to achieve whatever temperature you want. With a cylinder, we don't have to do that because you, you're warming it static effectively. You're not warming it as it's on the move. It's not it's not it's not mobile. So so you know whatever's coming on this upstream, whatever's coming out the mains the mains riser, um, combis have to slow it down significantly slower. And that's why at the other end, when you when you're running the path off, or you know you get this very slow hot water draw off coming through coming through bath outlets. So you'll get hot water. And you'll get consistent hot water. What you won't get is you'll you'll sacrifice performance. Generally. Yes, yeah, and that's where like a com like a system boiler, especially for HMOs. If you've got three showers and they all start work at eight o'clock or nine o'clock, they all get up at the same time, and you turn the shower on, someone's going to go without hot water. That's what, that's why people put electric showers off because on a combo you can't run that that amount of showers. No. No, it, it it just wouldn't be able to cope as we, as we oh, saw in the in, in the tables earlier. And, and the other thing is, is if, if you if you move into electric showers, then what they do is they draw a significant amount of energy. You know, they draw off a huge amount of of, of, of kilowatt hours onto onto either whether it's a tenant paying for the bill or the landlord paying for the bill. Um, you know, they, they set you know a, an average electric shower is going to be about seven kilowatt rated, and, you, and, and and I mean average performance at that. To actually get a decent electric shower performance, you're moving into the 12, 13 kilowatt capacities, and 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 they're nowhere near as good as what we talked about earlier—the thermostatic valves that, that can deliver, deliver much better showers. So, right. but, but if, if you're drawing 13 kilowatt for a 10, 15 minute shower, that's a lot of load that you're pulling on the on on, on the electric. It's a lot of load, especially in two or three two or three showers at the same time. You need talking combination of nearly 40 kilowatts. Okay, brilliant. Thank you. Okay, so I suppose this is my job now. This is this is what I'm paid to do, which is which is which is why why after all of that would you choose an ozo? Um, and and I would like to think that there are, there are yeah, we're shut off now. You've done many it. reasons. Yeah, I've done I've done my bit. Combis, combis <laughs> and heating system. You can bugger off now. Yeah, I've done the education bit. I've done a great job. Good, great, great job for every other manufacturer, but but but, but no, now it's our turn. So we are an award-winning manufacturer. Uh, we have been around for, 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 for 25 years in the UK, uh, much, much longer across Europe, uh, Norwegian manufacturing uh, facility. Um, and, and we've won awards for our products in the UK uh, in, terms of, in terms of their energy efficiencies and in terms of their, their, their usage and, 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 and how they're designed. That we're very innovative in, 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 in taking what is a, it's very difficult to redesign a hot water cylinder because it is a big vessel full of hot water. But what you can do is change how it how it interacts with the rest of the, the the products that feed off it, how it performs, how it how it how it becomes more efficient in terms of its energy, and and we're constantly reviewing our our position, and we work within domestic and commercial, and and, and in fairness, and marine and various other markets, which which is 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 big across the whole of Europe. We are actually the biggest manufacturer of stainless steel and vented products in Europe. Um, in the UK, I'm um, wondering what I'm looking at. I'm looking at their their tanks. So that's what I'm doing. So we need it. Before I forget, we need a PDF for this. Yeah, this I, I, really I can do that. Yeah, we can share that. That's no problem. Yeah. That's no problem. Sorry. So we, we, we've, got, we've got vast amounts of experience in, in, in manufacturing you know, stainless steel domestic cylinders. And we are recognized as, as, as being the most efficient products available in the UK market. We have the only fully A-rated, ERPA-rated range of, of cylinders. There are, there are ranges of cylinders out there that may have one or two within their range that are A-rated. We are the only company that have managed to achieve, you know, from, from what is effectively a 150-litre cylinder through to a 300-litre cylinder. And they're the difficult ones, the bigger ones because energy efficiencies in domestic hot water are based generally on heat loss. So the bigger the tank, the harder it is to maintain that, that, that heat uh, and, and control that heat dissipation. We've managed that at Ozo, and, and I'm not going to give away the secrets. You know, it's, it's, it's Grandma's secret sauce recipe. But, but we do use what they call vacuum insulation panels, which are, which are great for retaining heat. Um, but they add, they add cost. So we've got to, we've got to manage what we, what, how, we, how, we, how, we, how we sort of which products at which level you know, of, of pricing. And we'll come on to pricing that you know, for the most efficient cylinders, you pay more money. Not because we just think that's a better way of making more money. It's because the materials we have to use to achieve those ratings are significantly more expensive to procure. Uh, and, and to install but but we believe it's important that you know for energy efficiency if you're what you can do with our aerated range is it'll save about 400 kilowatt hours per, per, per year which is about 80 pound a year in, in 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 current tariff so you might pay more but but, but the life cycle cost is is, is less so so there's, there's trade-offs in in what we do in, in everything we do but that's our range of cylinders are designed to provide as many different options as we possibly can to provide domestic water 
So we're unique in our ability to meet those needs. You know, whether it be an installer for ease of installation, we look at that, how can we make it easier? How can we make it that all the components are in the right places, they're easy to get at and, and they're easy to maintain? You know, how, how, how can we make it easy for specifiers to be able to, to say, you know, use this product because it, because it achieves that or it achieves this. And, and, you know, we use that by doing different products for different, for different, different reasons and, and, and different grades of product. And then consumers, you know, what consumer wants at the end of the day is reliability, performance and, 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 and cheap to run or cheapest to run. Um, but equally, when it comes to maintaining it, what they don't want is to have somebody have to come into the house for three hours and drain it down and find it and get it out and take it all out and then repair it and put it back. You know, we've got to look at ways which we do in, in terms of somebody coming into the house, quickly repairing, getting hot water back up and running as quick as you possibly can and getting back to normality. And our products are designed to be able to achieve that. So from a, from a landlord perspective, maintenance is a real key in terms of, in terms of what, what I was all building to their products. And I'll, I'll, I'll talk about those products specifically. Um, they're very compact. You know, we've talked about space. We, we, everything we do with our cylinders is to look at how we can reduce that footprint. You know, we, we, we look at the best ways of being able to provide all of the safety features we've got to provide, provide all the components, provide all that insulation and, and, and the capacity and everything else. But how do we make that as compact as we possibly can? You know, nobody wants a 300 litre cylinder sat in the front room. You know, that's not, not the most, they're not the prettiest of things. Ours, I would say the most aesthetic, but I still wouldn't want to be sat looking at one next to the TV when I'm watching the football. You know, they're, they're hidden away in cupboards. So how do we best utilize that space? And that's something I was are very very good at in terms and then equally how do we best get it into that space how easy to install uh, and, and the easier we make it install the cheaper it is to install because there's less time la less labor less man hour to in order to install uh, and again then from a consumer point of view how can we make sure that with all that you get the best performance you get the best energy efficiency in terms of operating that's what that's what ozo do that's our that's our mantra effectively that's our culture uh, i've touched on the a rated our super series range which i'll which i'll come on to very shortly is a pre-plumbed or, or a virtually pre-plumbed cylinder. But what you see in the market generally, you see standard cylinders, you see pre-plumbed cylinders. Standard cylinders are, are everything in a box with all the kit that you've got to put together and, 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 and connect with, with copper pipes and, and, and a plumbing heated engineer would do that. Pre-plumbed in, in, their, in their ways, somebody else doing all of that work in a factory somewhere else and then, and then shipping that as a complete pre-plumbed product. And, and you get all the pipes on the outside and all the components. So there's, there's high risk of damage, there's high risk of, of, of transportation damage from that and, 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 and lots of high labor cost added to, to that product. We do a standard within the super series range. We actually put all that within the casing of the unit. So all you actually see is this, this lovely outer casing effect. I think it's lovely. I don't think many people will be as enthusiastic, but, but, but the reality is you've got this nice sort of white outer casing. What you don't see is all this external pipe work and all the components and everything else. It's all, it's all built into the unit, which makes it very compact. But it also means when it comes to maintenance and accessibility, it's all in the same place. So all the cabling and all the pipe work to the best to, that, that is involved with the cylinder is, is concealed within the cylinder. And we do that on our indirects and our directs. Slightly different on the indirect because you can have different systems. You can have different zones and different, different plumbing systems. And, and the more you add more motorized valves, more zone valves you add to, to that, then that, that creates more plumbing around it. But we, we, we plumb it to the... To, the, to, to, to work with a system boiler in a, what would be a, let's say a, a, a standard environment, but there could be many, many, you know, again, it's another presentation in, it, in, in itself. Um, very simple and easy to maintain, very compact. We also use an integral blending valve within the super series, which what that means is, is and this comes back to a question you, that, that Anthony, Anthony asked on behalf of somebody earlier, in terms of, we do, you know, we've got a five bedroom property, but we don't, just don't have the space. Certainly, if you can find the space, what we can do by using integral blending valves, we can downsize the capacity by a couple of sizes compared to other cylinders. So, if, for instance, our 180 litre cylinder will give you about, uh, you know, sort of 220 litre performance. So it's competing with the 200 litre to 250 litre cylinder. So we, we generally pitch it against that sort of 250 level, because what you can do is store the hot water at a higher temperature. And then it blends with cold. So you get, it, you get that sort of 60-40 mix of, of hot and cold as, it, as it's distributing the water. So you're increasing the usable capacity. So we're actually doing the blending of the hot water from the cylinder rather than at the point of use of the device. So we're, we talked about thermostatic valves earlier. What you're not having to do is, is, is turn it up to 40 to, to then you know, get more hot water and less cold. You can, you can deliver at 40 degrees from a cylinder that's blending cold and hot, storing at much higher temperature, so you're getting more usable hot water capacity across, across the property, which makes it more efficient, it makes it, more, it, makes it cheaper to, to, to use, but it also reduces the size and need of having a big cylinder. So in a property that might use, say, a 300-litre cylinder, we could probably look at somewhere around 210 litres in equivalent. So 
for about 300 litres and our 250 litres, you're getting even more. You know, you're getting so much more. And that's, again, I come back to the Ozo ethos and the Ozo culture of how do we make something that is standard capacity give somebody even more, you know, get more performance, more efficiency. And that's what, that's, that's what our, 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 our systems do. Um, I also touched on washing machine frames, and I'll come on to them in more detail. They're, they're great for HMO properties, especially. And the, what you can do is, if there is a utility space, a coat, a cupboard, a hallway space, we can place a cylinder above a washing machine. So we, um, and we've developed a, a frame system that, that is designed and has been uh, load bear tested against our product. So it's, it's something that works very specifically with those old products. And what it means is effectively is your washing machine sits directly underneath your cylinder. So we can combine that space. So we're using the space above the cylinder rather than the floor space. And that's, that again is our thinking in terms of how do we, how do we accommodate or make it easier for, for, for certainly landlords and tenants and, and, and homeowners to, have a, a cylinder but not necessarily where, where where traditionally you would need to use that floor space we can actually stick it above the washing machine uh, and that could be in a garage space in a utility space and and and, and or or, a, or an area and cupboard space specifically um and finally I've, I've touched on this everything we do is designed to surpass what is what is what is legislative or, or building control or performance requirements in the uk uh, and, and meets those standards. So using those old products, I could list them. There is, a, there, is a, there is a long list of all our endorsements and ISOs and CE marks and everything else. Uh, we're RAS approved or keyword approved, which is, which is, which is, which is a much more thorough testing uh, body in terms of domestic hot water. So all of our, all of our products are designed to exceed the expectations of safety and, and, and performance. And, and what we get from that is, a, is, is the ozone quality stamp, but you also get the outstanding product life expectancy. You know, this is, they're, not, they're not the cheapest of products to install cylinders. And what you don't want to be having to do is, 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 is replace them every two or three years. You know, we expect you'd fit an ozone, and, and, and I would expect that within 25 years, um, you know, it's still, it's still doing what, it's, what, it, what it was designed to do. That's, that's certainly our ethos. So I'll touch on the product. Um, so, so this is this is us. This is what we call super coil. This is an indirect cylinder, and and as you can see there, the image is is probably the most important part of this at this stage. When that is installed, it looks pretty much like you see in there. You know, this is about the the, the, the virtual pre-plumbed element of it. So within that casing, there's there's quite thick insulation, and inside that there's an inner stainless steel vessel. But there's also there's also elements of pipe work and and and, um, and and cabling. And actually, what I've not done is actually show an image, and, and I've not put in the presentation of the top. So we see on the top here, we've got this little this little black thing popping out, which which, which is called the tundish coming out of the side of the the cylinder. That that top lifts off, and then that top is all the components: the expansion vessels, the PRV, the inline <laughs> strain. There we go, Nick. My 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 my, my attractive assistant there has um, has assisted, and that's that's exactly it. So. What you can see from that is that what you've got from a maintenance point of view is that top access. You haven't got to get round it or to the back of it or, it's, or, 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 or you know, 14 foot up the wall. You clip the cylinder lid off and everything's there. It's all there, all the components that you need. Uh, and we have a full manifold that, that incorporates all the TMP valve, the inline strainer, the, the pressure reducing valve. Everything is built into that, in, into that system. So what it, what it means is from an installation point of view, all you're actually doing, certainly on our directs, when I get to directs, is you're putting a, a cold water pipe in and a hot water pipe out, which is what you have to do with a combi. You're effectively bringing four pipes up the back and, and, and away you go. So we can provide templates to installers to put the pipe work in well before the cylinder is delivered to site. Um, so you can, you can configure the pipe work, slot the cylinder in, connect it up, commission the cylinder, and away you go. You know, it's, it's that simple to install. Very, 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 very smart. And it looks great. And, it, and when it comes to clutter and space, you know, if you start chucking the mop in there and the ironing board, you know, that's the real world of airing cupboards. There's space to do that because there isn't loads of copper pipe work and an expansion vessel and all this other stuff that you traditionally experience with, 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 with stainless steel cylinders. Um, and, Can I ask um, a question? How yeah. big is that? In terms of size, I mean, I mean, they go from what would be, say, about five, 500 odd in diameter up to sort of 800 millimeter high up to the bigger ones being, you know, 1.2 uh, over a meter. On average, 500 diameter up to about 900 mil to a meter. The reason why, because most loft hatches... Uh, I mean, sorry, a thousand, a thousand millimeters. Most loft hatches are 600. Yeah. Can that get... yeah you just... <laughs> some, some not all. If that's uh, it, 500... Well, last time, six hundred. Yeah, there are, there are, there are. I mean, there are. I, I mean, twelve hundred, thirteen hundred mil, fourteen hundred mil, probably average for a, for a normal one with a sort of five, five hundred to six hundred mil diameter. They vary. Ours are very compact, and ours are the slimmest in terms of what you call the standard. 
So yeah, you'd have you'd, you'd, you'd just about you'd just about wrestle one in. There are lots of other implications of putting him in lofts, load bearing things like that, um, uh, and, and and the rest of it. it equally, in terms of providing you know a, a satisfactory G three installation, uh, in terms of venting the unit and and, and allowing allowing it a satisfactory uh, opportunity to, to sort of blow out effectively. So there are other implications of that. But yeah, I mean, as are the most compact, and there are slimline ones on the market, there are horizontal ones on the market. We don't tend to work with horizontal. It's not it's not great. Um, it's still a technology that, that isn't quite sort of fine-tuned. Um, but slim lines, the problem with slim lines is in order to get the capacity, they've got to be taller. So, so you know, the slimmer you make the cylinder, the higher, the taller it has to be. So it's, it's difficult then when it comes to, um, you know, when it, come, when it comes to, to, to making them thinner because you've got to have the height and, and that, can, that can equally be a problem. So ours are the most compact, yeah. In terms of being able to put them in other places and other positions and manoeuvre them around, that, then ours are always the best. And, 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 and the key really is also when it comes to cost, you know, labour saving up to 70%. We've done most of the work ourselves. You know, it's already, it's already been installed in, in, as a factory fitted product. Um, you've also got integral expansion vessels. We don't use air gaps and bubbles, which are traditionally main, high maintenance in terms of, resetting and losing what what some traditional integral vessels do is that they have a, a high pressure gap that holds the water and creates that expansion relief within the within within the vessel but over time they they reduce and they reduce and they reduce and they reduce and you lose that that air gap and you have to have them drained and reset which is a you know between six and twelve months that can happen quite regularly uh, we use a traditional expansion vessel but it's still in built it's, it's reliable it's a reliable piece of kit that does the job and we don't get that transfer of of water to air that you get within 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 what they call baffles or or, or air gaps um it's very it's, it's the shortest cylinder uh it's unique as we touch on space efficiency we have a unique patented design with sc so you won't see this from anybody else's um sort of, sort of manufacturing facility it's ours um and and yeah i mean i can't i can't talk more 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 enthusiastically about sc in terms of it, it is the best uh, in terms of in terms of the USPs of, a, of an indirect cylinder on the, on, on the, available in the UK at the moment, SX is its is its brother sister, but this is a direct version. So this is where you would have no gas boiler. Effectively, you're looking for something to store the hot water, heat the hot water, deliver the hot water, and that's what SX does very very well. Before you go on, um, you mentioned on that last slide you said maintenance friendly. Um, so how much space is needed above and to the side of the cylinder? for the annual service or maintenance of the cylinder. You, you mentioned annual service each year. Yeah, I mean, to the, si to the side of the cylinder, as long as you can get into it, very little, um, because there's nothing there. Um, it sits, it, it's as it is here, as you see in the picture here. Above, enough to get the lid off and, and, and to get access into it. So, I mean, the, the lid clips at the side and, and lifts off, so, so enough to get some, what, 200 mil? Uh, enough to be able to get your hands in and, and change the components. So, very, very tight spaces. Uh, are sufficient for for maintaining for maintaining the cylinder. As long as you get it in, then you can maintain it. So all the good stuff is there under that cap at the top. Then correct, correct. Yeah, okay. brilliant. Thank you. So so VIP SX VIP. We call it VIP because it's got vacuum insulation panels. We do that because currently under uh, EU legislation um, for ERP rating, um, electric product still has a carbon inefficiency sort of tariff attached to it, which is is, is slowly but surely being being reduced and, and hopefully taken away. Certainly, SAP code, which which comes into building regs um, for uh, 2020 and 2021 moving forward, called SAP 10 uh, and building code, is going to is going to encourage more use of electric products. So we should see some improvements in those in the, in those energy efficiencies moving forward. But but we we use what we call vacuum insulation panels, as I mentioned earlier, which are the best way to hold the heat. What you want to do with cylinders is certainly ones that, that heat the heat is, is is not lose that heat through dissipation out of the cylinder, because obviously all you're doing then is wasting it. You know, it's cooling down, and, and you don't want to do that. You want to heat the hot water and hold it for as long as you possibly can until it's needed to be used. Um, and we all do it. You know, we have we have we have we have cycles of heating up and, and don't use the cylinder. You know, we have we have controls that that, that do that. What you want to make sure is that in times when, when there's no demand for the cylinder, it's holding the hot water as long as it possibly can. And, 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 and that's what VIP panels do. Uh, and we have them in all of our direct products now as, as standard. What you also get from this, which, which I touched on earlier, which is the blending valve, which is, which is I think, critical for this sort of product. It delivers about 20% more hot water than a standard cylinder. So you can, you can size it down in, in terms of its usability. And that comes back to it being more compact and it being, more, being, being, more, being smaller, effectively, taking up less living space, less, less, less property space. 
so allowing you to downsize as, 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 as you do. And downsizing also reduces heat loss, because it's smaller, and then it reduces heating bills because it's, it's less water to, to, to heat. Um, same as the SC, integral vessels, pre-plumbed as standard. This is, this is not virtually pre-plumbed. I mean, this is fully pre-plumbed as a product because what you, you take it out of the box, effectively, I'm, I'm doing that as if it's, if it's that small. It's actually, you know, it, it's actually, you know, near four foot high. Um, but, but the reality is, is you take this out of the box and you connect it up and away you go, you know, once it's commissioned and, and, and obviously with a G3 qualified installer to do that. Um, very back to the labor saving opportunity, you know, the, to install one of these should be significantly cheaper than a, than a competitor's product because we've done most of the work. So, so we're saving on installation costs, we're saving on operation costs as well, hopefully saving on life cycle costs as well, moving, moving, moving through the, the life cycle of the unit. It's the shortest cylinder on the market. That's the best we can do. You know, we can, we, can, we can reduce it as much as we possibly can, but at the end of the day, they are vessels. You know, they've got to store a certain amount of water. Uh, again, it's painted to the, again, it has 25 years. And again, it's, you know, it's, fully, it's, fully, it's fully concealed pipes and, 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 and everything else with it. Very easy to install, very easy to maintain. Everything, everything within this is, 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 again, is on the top. But as you can see down this front panel here as well, when, when the last question was about how much room around the sides and the back, Again, everything we do is in that is in that front quarter or in that front that front front part. So you can see this this sort of um, sort of lip at the front. This 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 piece sat on the front, and then the panel above there. The piece on the front is is you remove that, and there's access then to 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 sort of the immersion heater and uh, sorry to the thermostat and, and drain cocks, and and then here you you've got access to the upper immersion heater and, and thermostats. So again, it's a case of removing a panel and having access to all of that maintenance. There's no getting around the side. You don't have to do that. There's nothing to do that for. Everything is in uh, that front that front sort of quarter or or or, or concealed in the top. You mentioned seventy percent labour saving there, and you did on the on the previous one as well. Um, so a question's come in. It says compared to other pre plumbed seventy percent saving. You know, you're not comparing that to other pre plumbed, are you? You're not. That's standard. This is a standard. We call this a standard. So that's to a, to a standard. Yeah, correct. The 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 difficulty with pre plumbed in in its traditional format is that it comes as you would normally. You know, everybody knows what a, you open the airing cupboard door and you can see there's there's your cylinder and it's covered in copper and and there's components and everything else there. The problem with them is they, 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 they get a lot of damage in transit. Then of course, it's all, all that copper is, 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 is sort of going to be protected. The next thing is, is that when they get lifted into site, somebody, rather than lift them from a carrying handles or whatever, somebody grabs them by the copper pipe and lugs them up the, lugs them up the stairs. Again, it doesn't do an awful lot of good. So there's an awful lot of, 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 of high level of damage possibility with, with traditional pre-plumb. But when you come to install it, it it's going to have the same installation benefits. But what you will see is, most manufacturers would our cylinders are priced at the same sort of same price as a stat what you call standard non plumbed most manufacturers apply about a ten to twenty percent increase in 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 their prices uh, and i'm talking about previous employees of, of, of uh, pre employers of me to 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 do pre plumbing because it's a labor an indirect labor cost within the within the manufacturing to do that or they outsource that in some way shape or form with ours we're competing price for price like for like against standard not against so it's not apples for apples when we bring, you know, pre-plumb pricing into it, but yeah, it's 70% against a standard product. Yeah. Yeah. Not, okay. a, not, a, not a pre plumb Yeah. I know you cut touched on price, but, um, and I know we're not going to talk about prices, but be assured that we've got the price in it's we we are, this will be contract supported by the manufacturers. So you know where to go. We haven't done the contract yet. This is happening right as we talk. Um, and Johnny's sorting it out with Walsley and yourself, Ozo, and these should be ready within the next couple of weeks. I know that I've said to a member, I'll, I'll help him out on one that he needs straight away. Um, but these are going to be contract supported. They yeah. are. They are. Yeah. I mean, I'll, I'll, I'll rattle right through because right at the end, I'll touch on the price, Nick. Um, Don't we, mention we, the prices on here. Yeah. Not, not actual prices, but, but, but the, the structure. Uh, and, and the benefits of it and uh, yeah I, I know and before I'm, we go on there's an awful lot of questions the questions have just shut up can we just go through some of them because otherwise we're going to leave it all to the end let's go through some of these questions yeah you've got a point Nick I mean Stuart uh, the MD of, of OSO is, is being beating her away in the chats yeah um, answering a lot of these uh, good man <laughs> yes, yeah, I'm very really impressed with you, Stuart. He'll be happy. He'll be, he'll, honestly, he'll be happy as pigs in you know what for that. We're doing that. He's, that's he's, that's he's, he'll be loving it. He'll be in his element. Yeah. In in the meantime, I've been waiting for uh, Neil to try and take a breath to jump in, but he doesn't do that often. You were warned. You were warned. 
I've, I've managed, if this is Stuart here, I've managed to unmute myself. I didn't want to uh, spoil Neil's thunder and, uh, and, and, and interrupt his flow, which was magnificent. So I just thought I'd make myself useful by uh, answering some questions. Thank you for that. <laughs> those on Facebook and um, those sort of seeing this in the, in the distant future, I'll read out some of the questions um, that Stuart's answered already. Um, so the first one, uh, do your systems work with CHP type boilers? What, what, what was Stuart's answer to that one? <laughs> Are you, I'm doing question and answer now. CHP is combined heat and power. It is yep. a technology that burns gas and generates electricity at the same time. They are super expensive and have not taken off in the UK in the way that was predicted 10 to 20 years ago. But the short answer is yes. Also, yep. this will operate perfectly happily with a CHP boiler. What a question. Correct. What an answer. Yeah. What an answer. Another one that was quite good was lay it down. If you're putting it in the loft, as you mentioned, Nick, can you lay it down and have it horizontally rather than vertically? No, um, no, no, no. Exactly. So, so also don't do horizontal. We systems. don't. No. Uh, and the reason for that is, and I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to quote directly here, uh, do them quite deliberately they are rubbish and don't produce efficiency <laughs> and are very expensive there are and there are some there are some questionable um um health and safety issues as well about horizontal at the moment that still need to be answered in terms of in terms of the problem is is, is that there's always going to be an underlying lump of water because you imagine you lay the cylinder on its side you've got to have a horizontal immersion heater um, and, and, and underneath that, because of the nature of a round cylinder, there's going to be a, a pool of water, this, this, this water that's, that's not used. If in time that becomes sort of, sort of, sort of static and, and, and we're not draw, you're not drawing water through, or if the cylinder's emptied and that water's just left in there and then it's refilled up, um, you're using what is effectively water that's, that, that, that has become stagnant within, within, a, within a system that's going to draw out of a hot water tap or a shower. So there is some question. I mean, I mean there, there are some manufacturers that do them. There are some manufacturers that would talk very, very strongly about that they've, they've addressed that, and I'm sure they have with different dip tubes and draw points. But the reality is, we a the market doesn't doesn't have a high demand for them. B they're not great in terms of Stuart. I think I'll, I'll use Stuart's term of rubbish. Um, and, and B there, there are some questionable operational issues with them at the moment as well. But I thought Neil, you were cy a Mr. Cyclopedia, but I'm impressed with Stuart. He even knows how no, he's, much he's got. He's got a lot more. He's, he's, he's Stuart. Stuart's been around ours oh, since day one. So you can, you can you imagine he's, in him. yeah, he's, 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 he, he chop his arm off, he bleeds Ozo, I can assure you. So, um, yeah, and he knows it, he does know his stuff, he knows his stuff. I'm, I, I, I he, he's more the technical, I'm more, I'm more, I'm more the sales voice, as you can tell. Can't help me. Well, Nick, I'll, I'll, I'll cover that question now as well, because I think that's quite an important one. And it was, how heavy are the small, medium, and larger cylinders? So, um, the weight of the cylinders vary from about 40 kilograms for a 150 litre, for instance, and 60 kilograms for a 300 litre. But the weight of the water is, is much more important than an empty cylinder doesn't really, the weight doesn't really matter unless you're installing it. Um, and thank God for the metric system because one kilogram of water equals litre of water. So a full 300 litre is 300 plus, three six, uh, plus 60, about 360 kilograms for the heaviest you're gonna get. But make sure that if you're putting it in the, in the, the loft, that the joists, yep, yep, can take that weight. It's a load load bearing issue every time when it comes in. And the other thing to bear with cylinders is is, is water's not not static; it moves. Um, so that that weight can shift, you know. Um, and 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 you know, you could you could have more weight suddenly to that side and more weight suddenly to that side. So so even within load bearing calculations, it can be quite complicated in terms of you've got static load bearing and then you've got you've got effectively jiggling. Uh, that needs to, needs to be brought into the equation. We can we can help with numbers like that. We can help with 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 you know generally that it's not often you'd see them moved into into attic spaces and things like that. It's not the most common 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 place. More 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 common is what you would see on the screen right now if if space is an issue, which is something we've developed even further as a as, and we when I talk about our load bearing within these washing machine frames specifically. Um, these are Ozo frames. These are these are frames that are designed to work with our cylinders, and we've done that load bearing testing so we've, we've had the test done on it stood still and, and no water moving and we've had it on you know jiggling around and the water moving so what we can what we can do you know up to up to 210 litre capacity because that that's the maximum load bearing weight we've gone to and that's probably as high as you 
you're going to have space to do this above a, above a washing machine. Um, we we know you can stick an ozo you know cylinder in that on top of that, fill it up with water, and and the frame will support the weight. And we we've got a 15 year sort of cover on the on on, on the frame uh, to do that. And that's whether it's you know swishing or or, or static. I'm going to ask this question: Is this actually sitting on the washing machine? It's sitting on a on a on a base on the frame, and the washing machine slots in in underneath. So the, the the frame creates a space for the washing machine. The cylinder sits on a on a on a platform. Oh, you know, I've seen some things. Yeah, <laughs> but you can see in terms of in terms of picture you're seeing there with 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 a sort of sort of more lifestyle shot. You imagine that in an airy cupboard space or a downstairs sort of hallway space or in a garage or a utility room. Then what you what you're effectively doing is creating space that you wouldn't normally use above the washing machine in order to be able to 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 put in a, a in a cylinder. And because they're more compact, because of the blending valve. Certainly, using direct units, which 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 we're looking at, um, then then ultimately you can you can have that benefit of performance from a cylinder. Uh, this is a good question that's just come in about this washing machine frame. Uh, yeah. Which is yeah. in the space around the ozo tank? So, will it in this situation will it heat up the washing machine? No, no. So so. The, I mean, the, the heat dissipation from the unit, the, the the insulation that we use around the unit stops that heat coming out. So, what you, what if you if you slice the cylinder in half, what you would have is an inner core, which is a stainless steel tank, and then you have you have you have insulation which surrounds the base of the tank, the sides and the top, and then an outer casing. So the the, the heat dissipation from the tank to the outer surface is not enough to cause a, a you know a significant increase. The air around is warm, you know, it does it a bit, but. There, there's there's no we within some of our insulation uh, instructions we talk about different wiring uh, and different electrical connections in order to accommodate maybe an increase in atmospheric temperature around cylinders um, but the the, the the washing machine and the, the cylinder wouldn't be affected at all okay great all right sorry to interrupt you no 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 i'm i'm, I'm very nearly there so uh, people will be pleased to know so the last cylinder i just wanted to touch on which is which is an indirect cylinder is our delta coil cylinder this is the a rated one i referred to so with delta coil what you're looking at here is very much the premium end of cylinders. It's not pre-plumbed. We do a pre-plumbed version, but 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 this this one, the, the sort of standard option is not. It comes with a separate expansion vessel, so we don't have all that sort of kit in 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 the in the, in the top, because everything that this is designed to do is to be the most energy efficient. So all the usable spaces, insulation, and 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 obviously protecting the heat loss. But it, but there is no other cylinder range that's been developed by any other manufacturer. To be able to achieve these levels of energy efficiency so what this can do is what we're basically saying is you heat a delta coil up and it holds the hot water for much much longer periods of time so it, it can it can save energy if you know, the need to reheat as often as other units up to 400 kilowatts per hour uh, 400 kilowatts per year hour would be great 400 kilowatts per, per year which is about very in tariffs but but you, you 60 to 80 pound a year on average so you know in 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 properties where there is relatively high demand in properties where 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 there may be periods of, of inactivity for long periods of time delta coil can actually be while it, while it's at the premium end of pricing it can be a a cost saver over time when you when you factor in the the, the cost to heat so and and we build into this things like holiday and legionella control so it can it can it can it can purge and it can shut down and it can hold at different temperatures and, and uh, you know obviously if, if you're away you can make sure it's not working while you're away for that that wood period and it can come back on before you come back up off holiday so we we built that functionality into it as well to keep that energy efficiency at, 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 at an a rating premium uh, and again i, I emphasize nobody else has achieved that that is just purely ozo so um we're very proud of it very very proud of it um and finally, we, we touched on pricing. LM, this is this is more relevant to LMPG members, of course. Um, Ozo are partnered with Woolsey, and they are the only partner that we that we have with LMPG uh, where these prices would be available. And 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 it basically, to cut a long story short, is as, as through through that LMPG Woolsey partnership, the pricing is 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 cheaper than non-members. It's also cheaper than what you would get from a standard walk into a plumber's merchant and buy over the trade counter. We've we've gone with a very competitive price. More so, recognising that our products fit this market very, very well. They fit that that that, that tenant, landlord, HMO, um, rental property market very well from a safety point of view, from a maintenance point of view, from an installation point of view, and from an operation point of view, performance and, and efficiency. So we want to we want you to use them, um, and 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 in doing that, you know, we've 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 created the right pricing, which is unique. It's, it, this is unique in terms of its pricing levels. So um, you, you would. Yeah. 
He signed off the prices, so. Oh, did he? <laughs> Neil, can I can I steal the screen for a second? Yes. Yes, of course. I've, that's, that's me. That's me done now, Anthony. Thank you very much. Um, yeah. I'm just going to put up a slide that we got from Johnny at Walsley. Um, so. As you mentioned, Walsley are the distributor for this, as they are for everything plumbing and heating and LNPG. Um, some sort of great news in this. Uh, first of all, let's just talk about availability. So uh, this is stocked typically at the Walsley feed uh, branches. Uh, so allow ample time. Don't expect to be able to go in there and get a, whatever you're looking for straight away. Give two or three working days. Um, with something like this, you know, you, you, you see it coming a mile off, so that, that shouldn't be an issue. Uh, but then as demand increases, as you can see down here on the fourth point, as stock levels will increase as well, and, you know, we're probably going to be a massive help on this. Um, it's all set up through your regular Walsley account. And if you go straight down to the bottom point there, great news for us, particularly you, Nick, um, is that you're not going to make yourself look like an absolute buffoon with that member that you promised to get one done on Friday because the exclusive LMPG contract pricing is already set up and ready to use from now. Right. I would never make myself look like a buffoon. I just blame everybody else. You're very lucky that I stopped and said buffoon actually. I almost said something else. Not that, that bad. Yeah. Yeah. I, what I was going to say was that Walsley approached me on this and they took me through that and said, look, they want to come and see you because it's the, they're moving into this market. They're really well known in the commercial because of the, their reliability. And they're moving into this marketplace now. And I thought it was just such a great fit, especially when it's all pre-plumbed. Yeah, um, I've, 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 from my point of view, this, because I've seen the price and I've measured it against everybody else. This is like pre-plumbed, the pricing is phenomenal, and I'm not just saying that. Um, and again, please, members, just ring up, get a price, and you can tell us what you think, because I think it's really good. I think that the, the kind of approach to this marketplace is unique as well, especially with their pre plumb stuff, um, and especially with their A rating. Um, Johnny went through this with me about how good the A rating was, and I, all I can do is really, on behalf of Johnny, thank you very much for introducing us. And Neil, thank you so much. Neil, thank you, thank, thank you for the opportunity. It's been, uh, it's been thank great. Thanks for signing it off, mate. That's all I can say.